Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Sarah of Sarah's Prismatic Musings, and this week I have a very special guest. I met her a couple weeks ago at the Sierra Vista Small Business Market, and her name is Alma Pipes, and she is the creator of this comic book, and she makes jewelry, so I picked up this really pretty pendant from her. And so this week we will be talking about her comic, The Hive, Buzz of New York. So Alma, Alma is am I saying it right, Alma? Yeah, um, so what's really funny is they say it different on each side of the state. So when I lived in Georgia, they would say Alma, and when I lived in Cali, they would say Alma, or it's like switched around. But really, in the end of the day, my name is still a bagpipe. <laughs> um, my mom didn't realize that, but I told her yesterday, and I was like, they missed out in high school. They can have called me a, a bagpipe because it's actually a name of a bagpipe. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's it's so funny. Well, good thing you didn't tell anybody that. <laughs> you know what? You, you would think you would Google it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Funny. So Elma, tell us about your comic and where did your idea for this comic book come from? So I, I'm a, as you know, I'm a cancer fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, I do this really weird thing where I get a brain tumor and then I take breaks for a couple of years and then I get another one. But growing up with those things, I never had a superhero that was relatable to my situation. I mean, we have superheroes that have cancer, but it's not, it's just like kind of a side thing. Um, like Deadpool goes and destroys his mental health and his self to live. Um, there's a character that is Thor and is a woman that she has cancer, but every time she de like she turns back into her normal self, her cancer, um, all the treatments and everything just kind of disappears. So she, she like it just backtracks. So she prefers to stay as a superhero so she doesn't die, which makes sense. But I wanted to like give a healthy superhero that um, they can look at and go, oh wow, she's saving the day in a creative way, working with her illness and not against. And it's her cancer doesn't define her or it's not her personality, it's a part of her. And um, I wanted to put like of what I went through as a cancer kid into my experiences in there because I obviously I can't have the answers. It's impossible. We all experience things differently. It's, you might have the same brain tumor as me, but you are going to experience it different. So I refuse to say I have the answers, I have the tools. And so I put things I experience and I just put in a little comic book and different characters and gave it to the world. And so I'm working on making that really fun. What was the other part of the question? <laughs> Where did you come up with the idea for your comic? Are well, the I characters guess I can... based on, I know that Emmy is you, right? Yeah, yeah. My friends make fun of me for it, but you know what? I kind of deserve it. It's a little self-insert. But interestingly enough, I did not want Emmy to experience everything I went through. That's putting a lot of character traits in one character, and I didn't want it to just focus on her. And so I introduced different characters that have unique challenges or they're just starting their journey of having a disability but also having like other stuff on top of that um one of my characters name is Annalise and she her superhero name is Green because she's mutant death and um she struggles a lot with feeling like she has to prove that she's capable of doing anything and she refuse to be babied but because she's mutant death people accidentally baby baby her and so she goes out of her way to look tough and mean and she's like she's our muscles in our group like she'll take out a punch if she needs to and she's definitely the mom person in the group she might not be able to talk but you know when she's mad at you just by her look <laughs> and then I have Kai that 
um, struggles a lot with like trying to fit in with his family, but also with the, there were, he had an, a traumatic incident where he lost his eye. So he is now adapting to having, suddenly having a disability and going through that. Um, I wanted to make sure every season my characters are experiencing something and figuring it out because um, I didn't want it to just go really fast. I wanted to focus on one thing. Um, so Anna, Annalise is not yet in the comic. She's going to show up soon, but the next issue you'll meet Kai, which I'm really excited about because he's cute. <laughs> How did you come up with your title, The Hive Buds of New York? So I don't know if you ever heard like in Greek mythology and some of um, Vikings and other things that, you know, bees are messengers for the gods. Um, and my whole thing is I'm passing positivity and spreading awareness. And so I wanted them to be my little messengers. But I also knew Emmy couldn't do it by herself. And when uh, bees are together, they're in their hive. So it's a group of superheroes that were given a gift and based off bees. And so that's where I got that part. <laughs> um, New York is fun to draw. And that's really it. I just like drawing the city. I was going to say, have you ever lived in New York? My sister did. Uh, when I went to visit her, it's a great place to visit, but I don't, I don't think I could live there. I would get lost so fast. <laughs> my my mom's from uh, upstate New York, though. I have a grandpa there uh, that has a farm. Oh, nice. Very cool. She was born in Woodstock, New York. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a character who is introduced in this episode, and his name is Parker. And so Parker's superpower is he can go through walls. And he is kind of having a little bit of difficulty processing um, what he's going through. And so he, you, your character, Emmy, sees that he has a purple aura around him. Why did you choose purple to represent negativity? Um, well, I just felt like it's like every time I think about negativity, I think of a dark purple and a slime kind of texture and um so that's what the negative nancy's are actually made of so that purple thing is the energy of a negative nancy um which they like to mess with your thought goblins and irritate them so they can bring themselves into a physical form and then they turn into that slime creature that you see um so i wanted it to look like a I just felt like purple was just the right color to explain that because then a, a light and a negative color they are always a balance mm -hmm. and I think purple is a contrast to yellow so I just kind of use my color theory of a system but it is the best way to explain it so Emmy as we know is based off you and she can see auras can you see auras as well so no I'm I, I can't do anything fancy like that um, the reason why I had her see Aura was just because she can pick up on people's feelings, and so she kind of just learned with it. My, I have a sibling that can pick up Auras, but I don't talk to that sibling much. So from what I remember her occasionally saying is what I did in there, and I have some other friends that see Aura, um, but I put that in the plot because at the time, Negative Nancy's can't be seen by actual people. Only when they are pulled through the physical plane, you're able to see them. So that's how she got chosen by Beatrix, which is that little go uh, little goddess doll. It looks like a bumblebee. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. So did you name Beatrix in the in this um, book one? No, I actually for a, a reason. Yeah, the little the the little doll thing. Yeah, so I didn't name her because like I didn't I had a name picked out for her, but 
from what I experience, like with me going through what I go through, um, I just kind of go with the flow of things. I don't question because, you know, if you start questioning too much, you start thinking too much and that can mess with your thought goblins. And so I just having Emmy go with the flow and kind of accept it. But the next episode will will learn her name and she's just like, okay, your name is cool, whatever. <laughs> but that's like, it's a, one of my coping mechanisms of how when I have a brain tumor, I, I go through that. It's just, I go with the flow. It's not, it's better to swim with the stream than up the stream. Right. Is the best way to explain it. Definitely. So yeah, that leads me like perfectly into my next question. When you were first diagnosed with having the reoccurring brain tumors, how did you cope with that news? How did you? So I was diagnosed as a really young kid. I was 10 years old the first time I got diagnosed. And I was literally at death's door. From what they, t when I had my first brain tumor, it was bigger than a plum. Wow. I had hyphocephalus and we didn't, how I remember, I remember my mom fighting to try to figure out what was wrong because I was vomiting all the time, but I wasn't like sick and fatigued. I was actually throwing up brain fluids um wow. and that wasn't fun <laughs> no. but growing up as a child from what I have grown up with this now was I wasn't very intact of what was going on one because every brain surgery or you have things get turned off and I wasn't paying attention to those things and then on top of that I was my mom was very much taking care of me and protecting me from the scary things mm. so growing up I never really thought about it. I just did what I had to do. I remember I remember I had friends in the children's hospital and I, I don't remember them making it. So I spent my whole life in a hospital. I have um I had three brain surgeries by like from now. Um I had a brain surgery at 10, 12 and 25. Um and I'm at that point where they're just like, hey, girly, we don't think we're ever going to get the, the whole brain cells. Because um, if we have one little brain cell, it will come back. So I'm just coming to terms to like, you know what? I might die from this. But, you know, I could get hit by a car tomorrow, so I shouldn't dwell on it. I, I came to terms with it, but I have some goals I have to finish before I go. Right. So that must have been really hard seeing your friends, as you stated, like not making it. And I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. It must so have been from what I remember, I, I remember kids playing in the playroom with me mm -hmm. and then just never seeing them again. And that could be because they passed away or they got out. I remember someone in my first brain surgery, there was a mom that would talk to my mom and their baby was been, was there since they were born in and out. Um, I know I don't know what happened to that kid, but I remember giving him a um, caramel caramel apple because people would bring those for me for some weird reason. I guess a doc a, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Right. But it didn't work. <laughs> uh, um, but I would get I remember giving him one, and then he would give me stickers. But I was I was gone pretty fast. I think I was only in the hospital for the first time for maybe six months. I my body's built for this is the best way to explain it. This this recent brain surgery, I went home the next day. And then I was upset that my mom had to walk me to the bathroom. And so I started walking two weeks later by myself. I was very determined to do those things. I think my second brain tumor, I was only in the hospital for two months. Wow. You have a really strong willpower and really. I, I, I try. I always say E for effort or I'm saying I sur I'm surviving at least trying. There you go. So when will book two be released? 
actually very soon um so i am on page 10 right now and on my script because i do scripting i do a uh, a stan lee method like when he would go so stan lee would give his people a sticky note and it like he's like spider-man needs to beat up um the goblin kills him gives the writers the sticky note and then they would write scripts and then they would draw it so i skipped the stan lee version and i just script it and this script has 15 pages and i'm on page seven so i'm almost done yeah. um because i'm merging those two together i have to do a graphic novel based comic book now which is crazy because that's gonna be a thick book and since i was doing the craft fair i'm able to get maybe a little bit more than like 50 prints which is exciting because I got accepted into an organization recently that dresses up as superheroes. Oh, cool. And on my Instagram, I think you saw that I had the Sweetie Bee costume. Yeah. I'm going to be going to the hospital dressed up like her with my regular hair. So if the kids start braiding my hair, they'll see my cancer scars. Oh. So I can pass out my comic book as Sweetie Bee that's also a survivor and a fighter that can relate with them. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I have to reach, I, they asked me to reach back out when I got more prints. So when I, the only reason why I sell all those keychains is because I want to fund this myself. Uh -huh. I have some organizations, but they don't fund my comic. So what I do is I have like a little donate box, but then I make those rabbits and those keychains. And then I just split it in three and I'm a fun, a comic fun and pay my dad back fun. And so I'm able to fund those comics. So the next time we go there, I won't have comics because I sold out, but I'll be oh, able to- I got to one of the up. last ones? Yeah, you actually did. Um, What's really cool was um, everybody asked me about my comic. And when I explained it to them, they were like, we got to support this. So like, if they didn't even read it, they they um they bought it anyway, which is crazy because I have never had support like this before. I have never had something that people that I don't know believe in me with, which I never thought I would even be here. Surprisingly, I have a writing and reading disability on top of having brain tumors. So me writing a book is weird. <laughs> That's me, amazing. My, I know, right? My brother and I, he, he's very serious. He's a very illogical man, but he also suffers from an illness too. He has a rare form of bone marrow cancer is the best way to explain it. Wow. It's only treated in Ohio in a Pacific Children's Hospital. We're a pair of rare cases. I keep getting brain tumors um, from my set. And then he's just some really fancy gourmet man that they're all studying him, but he's so smart. He's actually my editor. So the Ryan is actually my editor and we put both of our experiences in. And one of the, he's very, he's so honest. I love him so much. <laughs> he, he's my little brother and we have those moments. He turned to me and he was like, this is weird. You're not supposed to be writing books. <laughs> And I, I recently got him into my cancer jokes too. So we're those little terrible kids that make two cancer kids making cancer jokes. Oh my gosh, that's too funny. I made a new keychain. Oh, cute. It has little flowers in it and everything. And then I have a couple other things I'm making. I got a mermaid one. My mom bought me tiny little seashells. Oh, and so cute. I'm making a mermaid, a Pokemon mermaid one. And so I'm very excited about it. Nice. You were talking about your brother and how he helps you edit. Um, yeah, so is I, that, you, we have the editors listed here. Is he, which is he one of the characters in your books? Yes, he's the one with the white hair. So one of his oh. chemo pills, he's off it now. They're doing a different one. Turns his hair white. Oh. It'll grow in brown, but then turn it white. Right now. It grows in white and now is turning brown. Mm -hmm. So he looks like a cute little zebra and I love it. He looks like a gentleman. He looks like he owns a business fund. <laughs> so 
he's we're the opposite of each other i'm creative i think with my heart <laughs> uh and i just like toaster strudel and this man my brother is very logical very down to the point he has an engineering degree he's working on that and he's very precise like if i make a mess i will get a look <laughs> um so since i think with my heart and i say things he he goes ahead and takes my serious talks and makes them sound more logical and makes more sense and so it's more coherent because sometimes my speech ahead of it gets in the way or I don't understand things because of my brain injury so we kind of tag team it mm -hmm. but I also um, put our experiences of having cancer and being siblings in our relationship in the comic um, because we don't want our relationship to be about our illnesses. So we don't really talk about it because mm -hmm. I don't want us to make a connection of just, we're both the kids in the family with cancer. I don't want that to be all what we talk about. I want him to make fun of me because I spelled the word elephant wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or when he texts me and sends, I, I prefer him to send me the laws of New York and special dorms. He sent me the the New York regulations pamphlet for um, for safety requirements for people in wheelchairs and being in dorms in New York. Hmm. So he, may, I prefer that. I would prefer that. <laughs> That's cool. So were you using that information to help you write um, book two? If you saw in that seat in that episode, Emmy bring. Like she helps Kai get his shower ready. She puts the shower chair down. Uh -huh. That's actually a part of it. Oh, um, okay. I also hid my cat in the comic. Oh, you did? I don't think I um, noticed the cat. I noticed the cute little bee and your cute little bee backpack. And I actually own that. You do own that backpack? It's a bit, it's a Bensi Johnson. Oh, cute. She has the best stuff. When I was in animation school, or or courses, whatever you want to call it. Um, I carried that backpack around and there was this girl, her name was Kwanda, and I love her with all my heart. Uh, and I still very, even though I had brain surgery out of everything in the college, I still remember her. Uh -huh. And it's probably because I connect what she gave me as a nickname to my comic. Uh -huh. So my, we think I've been noticing I have very selective memory of recent. So there's like some things that I'm not gonna remember at all, but then there's things I 100% remember. But she gave me that nickname because of that backpack. My superhero's name, she called me Speedy Bee. Oh. Because I would carry that everywhere I went. And um, it became my superhero name and my my um handle on everything. Yeah. It's, it was so cute. And I know your whole table was uh, decorated with bees. And so in honor of that, I have my little bee. That's so pretty. <laughs> My actually, here's so fun. Here's something hilarious. My whole house is low key bumblebee themed. Oh, really? That's Even awesome. to my cups. I drink coffee every day out of my cu my mugs that my sister bought me. Oh, that's so cute. It's a whole it's a whole set. So I have plates, I have cups, and I have bowls, and it's like my prized possession. If anybody breaks them, I beat them up. Oh no. <laughs> and then everybody in my family buys me mugs, and I love it. And then Hobby Lobby is the best place to get bee stuff. Uh -huh. So everybody buys me stuff from Hobby Lobby like this. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Everybody now can not stop thinking about me when they see bees. And I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you still have that backpack? Yeah, I don't use it anymore because I, I it's the back of it starting to come off like the leather. Oh, yeah. So I don't want to get rid of it, but yeah, I do. That's so cute. It is exactly like the one in the book, in the your comic. And the wings move. I'm wondering if I can find a way for someone to fix it because it's really this little piece right here. Yeah. It's ripping I'm, on the seam. I'm sure maybe if you brought it to like, like a specialty leather shop, maybe they could fix it for you. Yeah, because this was like the thing I carried everywhere I went. It fit my iPad. I was known for the girl that liked bees, but this is like my favorite backpack in the whole wide world. And I refuse to throw it away because of my comic book. Exactly. It's a keepsake. It's you. 
I mean, it started everything technically four years ago. Okay, so it's been four years. Is that when you started writing the comic? Um, this is when I started more getting intense to it. I always had an idea that I wanted to do this, mm -hmm. but I never really had a idea that was 100% set in stone until I actually like had little bits of comics already posted up dabbling in this idea. Mm -hmm. But when I got diagnosed with this brain tumor, it opened a lot of more like cans of worms that I forgot about. And so I deleted everything and I started when I was in recovery, um, I would draw at home with my mom as we watched murder, like 24 hours and stuff. We're a weird bunch, but you know, we had fun. <laughs> we made the time pass. I also took a lot of naps, <laughs> but whenever I would sit there drawing and they thought that was really good for my eye coordination. Uh -huh. And so I just would sit there and just doodle everywhere I went. It was a nice time. <laughs> you carried a notepad with you everywhere. Um, I actually draw everything on my iPad. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, I have Procreate and it's a $10 forever prescription, but I do a lot of like, um, I, I'll be honest, I'm terrible at sketching in a sketchbook. <laughs> it's yeah. so easy to draw on your tablet instead. Uh -huh. And I feel like you're also protecting the planet a little bit, not wasting a lot of trees. Right. But I do have things that I write in for my comic. I have a calendar where I log everything so I don't feel like I'm slacking. So I do use some paper. Yeah, of course. So Alma, you have a lot of, um, you like you said, you have Instagram, you're on Facebook, um, and it's all, it's Sweetie B. Is it two or just Sweetie B? It's Sweetie B2, but if you go to my Instagram, there is a link that leak, that you could copy and paste and will leak to everything. To my Instagram, to my TikToks and stuff. It's okay. that blue LinkedIn tree or whatever it's called. Yeah, and I'll that link bring up, that huh? down below for people. Yeah, I was like, it's very easy to actually make. I think I made it for free. Oh, cool. Now, you were telling me some exciting news at the small business market. Do you want to go ahead and tell us now about that? or I think I already mentioned it. It was that organization. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start doing my printing really soon, and then I'm going to actually start going up there. Okay. I actually um, just bought this stuff to make my chess piece because um, Emmy can't fly. My world's actually very technology-based not like magic base. There's a little bit in there, but not like a hundred percent. So I bought a new piece so I can use my wings and I have it set up where Emmy has a way for her to keep her balance straight when she flies. Okay. Cause I actually incorporate having a brain injury with each one of my characters or with, or what's going on and their traits are all there. I incorporate sign language in my book as well. And all their, technology also work with that but um i'm working with that organization and then i'm going to get that big comic book printed and then i was on a podcast recently it's just it's starting to go over the moon and i'm like this is crazy yay i know it it feels so real it is real i mean you have a comic in print that is exciting i never thought i was gonna be here well i mean like I didn't even know if it was going to be alive here, but I didn't think that I would be making a difference. Um, <laughs> I was on the news recently too. Oh, wow. And they, when I met them in the studio, they were like, you're, you're helping kids. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm actually doing what I want to do. I thought I would never be here. Well, that's so exciting. And you are such an inspiration for the fact that you know, you've overcome your disabilities with reading and writing, it sounds like, and your your brain injury. So, so the thing is, I, I find creative ways to work with them. I don't read and write on my own at all, really. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I tried to spell my sister's name one time, and except spelling her name, I spelled oil when I was trying to spell Olivia. Oh. <laughs> Um, or 
I spell my nephew's name terribly. Um, but I found programs and things on my iPad to help me. Uh-huh. So the thing is, I, I feel like I work with it. Yeah. We're more like tag team. I'm in charge of it, but it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it just doesn't do it. I'm the boss. That's it. I'm the boss. <laughs> Well, I'm excited for you, Alma, and if you ever want to do a second interview, if you have more updates or anything, just message me. You have my email and my Instagram, which I don't really, I'm not really on Instagram anymore, but um, my cat's in the window now. (laughs) I want to thank you, Alma. Our time is up, and uh, thank you so much, and it was fun. Thank you. Bye. Bye.